November 29th, Titus Cohen. No obstacle can block God's plan for God's man. Titus Cohen headed for his next preaching stop. The Hawaiian sky was blue and the peaceful stream flowed gently near where he stood. But a thunderous rumbling broke the stillness and he jumped up. The natives began to run in desperation and calling out in their native language, screaming, run, quick, quick, or the waters will stop you. His native companions ran downstream, leaping from boulder to boulder. With his heart pounding, Titus grabbed his pole. He followed the natives and he used his eight foot long stick for balance. Upstream, a wall of water, maybe six feet tall, was rushing toward him. Stunned, he stopped. The cries of the natives broke through the haze of fear and Titus splashed to the other side. He reached the bank just before a wall of water crashed down and swept past him. His companions slapped him on the back, wide grins stretching across their faces. One of them said to him, when you hear the sound of many waters, you must move quickly or you will be late to preach. And Titus nodded, too shaken to speak. He thought to himself, or dead. After realizing they had just survived this near-death experience, his companions picked up the large gourds called calabash that stored their provisions, and Titus signaled he was ready. He would not miss a single appointment on his 60-mile preaching tour. Everyone in his district needed the gospel. At the next village, men, women, and children gathered. Titus prayed silently. His grasp of the Hawaiian language had improved, but he did not want mistakes to create barriers to their understanding of the gospel. Titus told the story of Jesus, and those gathered peppered him with questions. Eventually, a nod from his guide indicated it was time to move on. They had not traveled far when Titus heard the now familiar sound, rushing water. He glanced toward his guide who smiled and said to him, don't worry, the people of the next village expect you. When they reached the river, Titus stared at a rapid current. Downstream, they saw a mini Niagara Falls dropping several hundred feet. Across the raging river, Hawaiians waved, but how could he reach them? On the opposite bank, several strong, nearly naked men locked hands. They made a line and entered the water. The human chain moved carefully across until the lead person gained a foothold near Titus. His guide explained the plan. Titus grabbed hold of the first strong shoulder and he stepped into the swift current. As he crossed the river and his feet slipped, a strong and determined native would hold him tightly. Titus would then grasp the shoulder of the next Hawaiian in the human chain until he safely crossed to the other side. Once on the shore, Titus greeted the natives. As they walked, he talked about Jesus. When they had reached the edge of the village, a regal man, nearly six feet tall, stepped into the path. Whispers erupted. This was the high priest of the volcano, a drunkard, adulterer, and a murderer. Lighthouse is a professional services company with over 30 years of experience helping various organizations in growing from a startup to a well-established Fortune 500 company. Your success is our success. Call us today. Titus breathed a quick prayer. A language barrier had not halted God's plan. A raging river could not stop it. And neither would a high priest of a pagan cult. The priest squared his shoulders. Titus met his gaze and kept moving toward him. The high priest stepped aside. The people of the village gathered around Titus. Adults, children, invalids on the backs of their friends blind people led by their family members. Titus told them about the love of a man named Jesus Christ and their need for a new life. He told them God loved them 
and would help them. Tears flowed and many became Christians, including the high priest of the volcano. It was the same in nearly every village. When Titus returned home, hundreds of people came to his village to hear more about Jesus Christ. Within a few months, the population of this small village exploded from 1,000 to over 10,000. One Sunday, as Titus prepared to preach to a crowd of over 2,000, he paused and remembered the obstacles he had faced during his 60-mile evangelistic tour. He remembered the roaring rivers, the cult leaders, and his own inadequacy, including, at times, his weariness. Not once did God allow an obstacle to block his plan for Titus. In Psalm 112, God tells us, Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. Do you have obstacles you are treating like barriers? Are you truly trusting God with the plan he has for your life? No obstacle can block God's plan for God's man. Man, Chuck Stecker here. I'm the executive director of A Chosen Generation. So honored, deeply honored to be a part of 365 Christian Men. It's a pretty humbling experience to be allowed to do this, let me tell you. Our story today is Titus Cohen, November 29th. There's so many parts of this story for us to grab onto. The determination, the obedience of Titus Cohen, the trust that he had in God, that when God told him to do something, and in obedience, God would make a way. And sometimes it was, and I love the story and can picture, it says the half-naked Hawaiian men from the village coming across the stream, locking hands for him to come across and become a human bridge for this man. You know, we never know where God's going to use us if we function in obedience. We never know what God's going to do as a result of us being obedient to what he's told us to do, and we know it to be true, even when it's difficult. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, I look at the story of Titus Cohen, and very often we look ahead and we project at how difficult it's going to be to do something, and we say, you know, God must have made a mistake. That's just too hard. God would not call me to do something that difficult. And then we have those times when we're engaged in something and all of a sudden it becomes so very difficult, perhaps almost looks impossible. What areas of your life would that apply to? You know, here's my question for us today with Titus Cohen. We saw how to, out of his obedience, trusting God and getting there to the, the raging water and the bridge across. And then when the chief drunk, adulterer, you know, we go through that. A man of great stature is what it explained, would come to know Christ. I love the story of how many people, but you know, we can look at things and say, boy, the numbers are really the important thing. Well, I would agree with you. The numbers are really the important thing. And let me give you the number that matters. One. Yeah. In our obedience, is there one other person that may come to know Christ because of us being willing to walk through the difficult things, overcome obstacles because we trust God and we know that he's called us to do it and we won't turn back? That's really the question, isn't it? Let's be faithful men. So I ask you this question. Is there an area of your life you haven't trusted God and as a result, you haven't been faithful to do what he's called you to do? God bless you, man. You have a great day.